th- this broke today. And I'm talking about Chris Rock rebooting Saw. Those words are not really the words you wake up to and think, that sounds normal, that sounds legitimate, that sounds like a thing. But no, it turns out that it's true. According to Variety here, Chris Rock's rebooting Saw with Lionsgate. Now, Lionsgate, you have to realize, has gotten to a point where they, quite frankly, need something to work. Like, they they have not really had a huge hit or hits uh, like they did maybe 10 years ago and, and maybe up to like a couple years ago. Lionsgate is hurting. And so what better way to put some extra coin in their pocket? Reinvigorate the torture porn genre because Blue Mouse has been doing it to great success. And they're like, no, we started it. We, 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 we started it with Saw back in 2004. It's going to turn 15 years old this year, which is just weird to think. Weird to think. So this is what the uh, this is what the article says. Now, uh, the uh, Joe Drake, who is the chairman of Lionsgate, said that uh, who made the announcement today says the movie will be released on October 23rd, 2020. So not this year, not trying to hit the 15th anniversary. They're going to drop it on the 16th anniversary because, you know, everyone, everyone really gears up for that 16th anniversary. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, it's been 16 years since the original came out. I don't know about you. I'm feeling festive. Uh, but it says to here it says here that when Chris Rock came to us and described in chilling detail his fantastic vision that reimagines and spins off the world of the notorious Jigsaw Killer, we were all in. Saw is one of the highest grossing horror franchises of all time, and it's one of the Lionsgate's most successful film series. This upcoming film will still be as mind-bending and intense as the previous Saw films. Uh, Chris has conceived this idea, and it will be completely reverential to the legacy of the material while reinvigorating the brand with his wit, creative vision, and passion for classic horror franchises. What? I've been a fan of Chris Rock for for a number of years. I still don't quite get it. I still don't quite get where his love of horror movies has come from. I mean, I know he starred in Grown Ups and Grown Ups 2, which could easily be equated to horror films. I get that. I understand that. But when has he ever come out and been like, man, the last Hellraiser movie, DTV, but DT my heart. You know what I mean? Like, when do you ever hear that? So that's interesting. But this is where it does get fascinating when you start looking at who is also working on it with them. The movie will be produced by Berg and Coolis and directed by Darren Lynn Boseman, who helmed Saw 2, 3, and 4. The screenplay is based on a story conceived by Chris Rock and written by Pete Goldfinger with Josh Stolberg. The movie will be executive produced by Rock, Daniel Heffer, and the original creators of Saw, James Wan and Lee Whannell. Now, the reason why I find this to be interesting on a good way is that um, Darren Lynn Bowsman, who did Saw 2 and Saw 3, those were actually really, really, really good films. And Saw 4, surprisingly, was interesting enough. Saw 5, 6, and 7 were just... were, But number 2, 3, and 4 uh, were good. Especially number 2, I felt the ch- taking it out of the bathroom, putting it in the abandoned house was a nice spin on it. I thought it worked really well. And I'm interested to see what he's going to be doing but going back to this franchise and working with Chris Rock. Now, um, it says here, Chris wants to put his own spin on the franchise in the way Eddie Murphy completely put a fresh perspective on buddy cop films with 48 hours. This new saw is going to be an event film in the making for horror fans. It will have all of the twists and turns, hardcore layers, Oh, and Hardcore Layers that our fans expect, directed by one of the masters of the craft, and we cannot wait to get started. And you know what? That's a weird statement to make as well, right? This is going to have the wit and freshness that Eddie Murphy brought to the buddy cop genre with 48 hours. I'm sorry. Uh, No one's going to look back at 48 hours, albeit those movies were good. No one's going to look at those movies and think to themselves, that is peak Eddie Murphy. Right. It's trading places coming to America or Beverly Hills Cop. That's your choice right there. I don't I wouldn't have said the 48 hours with the exception of one thing. Beverly Hills Cop played up the laughs. It was more of a lighthearted comedy with the exception of Beverly Hills Cop, too, because Tony Scott took that shit dark. But 48 hours was definitely hard R, definitely R rated and definitely was something a little bit different at the time. But. Um, 
so okay i can kind of see what they're going for here i guess like i kind of get the reference you know but how many kids are going to sit there and go man i love the hell out of 48 hours yo no one no one's going to say that but chris rock apparently is really happy to do this and you know if jordan peele can come off of doing sketch comedy and can move over into doing uh get out and us and the twilight zone and tackling horror then I think Chris Rock could maybe do it too. I mean, you know what they say about comedy? It's just tragedy plus time. So it, horror movies are all tragedy based. You add a, you, you know, you wait 15 years, you go back and go, oh yeah, I remember that time Michael Myers cut that dude's head off. Funny, funny. Do you see the look on his face when he died? Ah, you know, it was classic Bill. I mean, he's dead now, but it was totally Bill, Apex Bill. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on this one. But when when you when you when you hear the phrase, the uh, Chris Rock, and Saw, and then also reboot, I, 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 but I'm willing to give it a go because of the talent involved, and I, I've always liked Chris Rock. So we'll uh, we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait and see on that one.